We're wannabes and has-beens and never couldas. We're rich motherfuckers and poor bastards and really, no kidding, poor folk. We're not the top shit. We're not even the middle. But fuck you if you judge us for trying. They say come to Seattle and you'll fit in wherever you want. But you belong here, with the misfits. They say go to Portland, that's a whole city of real misfits. But on your way home, in your winter clothes, Spokane will ask if you need something to eat and be glad to hear you have some place to stay. Because calling Spokane home might make you look a bit homeless. And that's a whole new kind of being a misfit. I know some other place is your capital H, home. But Spokane might be your capital O-M-E, OM. And no matter how high you climb, Spokane will be waiting for you near the bottom. A place for those that tend to roll downhill. Christopher Stuck's Spokane as an America holds a special place in my heart. Before I took this creative writing class, I frequented several poetry readings to get a feel for the art. Writing poetry was not something I was able to do with ease, in fact, it terrified me. But at the same time, it absolutely fascinated me. My very first poetry reading held at Auntie's Books in November of 2014 was what led me to this poem. They didn't begin the reading with any sort of announcement or greeting, but rather by reading Spokane is in America to the crowd. It was the first of many poems I would hear at poetry readings, and the one that convinced me that poetry was the beast I needed to tackle once and for all. It violently grabbed my attention with the very first line, and from that moment on, I was entranced. The reason this poem is so close to my heart is because it spoke to me on a personal level. As a Spokane native, I was born and raised here, and I had a lovely childhood at that. I'd always felt a fondness for the city and all of its potential, and yet nearly all of my friends at school or merely strangers on the street would say loudly and proudly that Spokane was one of the worst places to live in the world, that it was filled with scum, like drug addicts, homeless, conservative radicals, and that there were, quote, no hot chicks here, that the cops here have a hot trigger finger. And while all cities have problems, I refuse to believe that this city of ours was the worst. This is something I feel very strongly about. I firmly believe that this city is original and strong. We're bursting with potential and people who care. Hold on, little man. You all right? You okay? You wanna come over and help us draw? Be drawing over there. All right, come on. We have a fantastic art scene and an ever-blooming literature scene as well. We're passionate, we're active. We have fantastic architecture and most importantly, we have damn good beer. All joking aside, I've yet to visit a city I love more than this one and hearing Spokane is in America put what I was feeling into words so eloquently and accurately that every time I read it, a burst of pride rockets through my chest. After breaking the piece down and analyzing Christopher Stuck's approach, I admire his poem even more. 
The first stanza in and of itself could apply internationally, I feel, and not just to Spokane residents. To someone reading this poem for the first time, it comes off as crass and probably a bit vulgar. However, it's not for nothing. It has a definite purpose. The foul language, which is only used in the beginning stanza, is utilized to grab your attention right off the bat and keep you interested. This poem isn't particularly colorful or abstract, but rather shoves you this way and that with insults and sweeping declarations, and at first you almost feel as if you've been verbally assaulted. The name calling is abrasive and capitalized, making it seem bold and powerful and borderline personal. It's defensive and even a little self-deprecating, which works wonderfully in grabbing the attention of those with sentiments that Spokane isn't the best place to live. But it's only halfway through that they realize the poem is very pro-Spokane. It changes tone and begins to praise Spokane for its kindness toward others and for its willingness to help those who have fallen. It uses comedy to get its point across here and there, as well as a profound pun that works wonderfully in likening Spokane to a place of peace. It points out the differences between our city and others, namely Seattle and Portland, by using quotes that I personally have heard all too often. It's been a struggle trying to find things about this poem that I would change, because my only wish is that the poem were longer. I wish that more Spokane residents would read this poem and hopefully see how much truth this piece of literature speaks to our people and to our future. We have so much to be proud of and a uniqueness all our own. It's a poem I want to share with the world and everyone I know, and most importantly, it's one of the reasons I'm in this class to begin with. If you're looking for Neverland, turn back now. If you're a middle-class asshole and an unhoused outcast and seriously homeless as shit, welcome home. We've got a distinct meth problem and a happy trigger finger to boot. For fuck's sake, you're worth fighting for. You're neighbors with radical Republicans and I only shop at Huckleberry South Hillers. Others say there's just nothing to do here, I can't wait to leave. Anyone who says otherwise is suffering from prolonged Stockholm Syndrome. But you belong inside with the outsiders. And should you part or try to, we finally understand. It's not us. It's you. See if you don't want to watch the channel. Change it. Because when you come from a place like Spokane, you never have or will be beneath someone else's boot. When the going gets tough, Spokane will make you tougher. And when you can't take any more, she'll be here, the underdog awaiting her pop.